right, we're on. Gotta be serious. Welcome. <laughs> How are we doing? <sighs> the Lord is thy shepherd and I... What I'd like to do, I don't really like to proselytise or to preach to people. What I do like to do is just to remind people. And when they're ready, they may take some of that information on board. Now, I've already done a YouTube on this. It's about saturated fat. Is it good or not so good for us? Well, I'm going to give you a different bias slant. Excuse me for reading from some notes that I made. Here's something I prepared earlier from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, January the 13th, 2010. What they did is they had a meta-analysis of prospective cohort studies. They looked at 21 studies evaluating the association of saturated fat with cardiovascular diseases, strokes, myocardial infections, heart attacks. Now you and most of the population can relate to this because this is what's promulgated via our disease management system and our doctors and our governments and obviously all the people that make the kind of brands that have low fat this, low fat the other, diet this, diet the other. Stupid. Anyway, a reduction in dietary fat has been generally been thought to improve cardiovascular health. Is that true? Absolute poppycock. The objective of this study was to summarise evidence relating to the association of dietary fat with the risk of coronary heart disease, cardiovascular diseases, things like strokes and heart attacks like I mentioned before, in prospective epidemiological studies. 21 studies. 347,747 people or subjects were used. They were studied between 5 and 23 years over that period. 11,006 died from a cardiovascular disease. Through all their studies, what they found was the intake of saturated fat was not associated with an increased risk of strokes and cardiovascular diseases, coronary heart disease. Consideration of age and sex, why don't they just put gender, anyway, and the study quantity did not change the results. There is zero, no significant evidence for concluding that dietary Saturated fat is associated with an increase of cardiovascular diseases. <laughs> so, let me please remind you about some simple things that you can do right now to take control of your health. Eat more fat. Saturated fat is good for you. That is one incredible study that I've just brought to your attention. When you buy some butter, ensure that it is organic. As I said before, it takes about 10 pounds of milk to produce one pound of butter. And if that animal was injected with growth hormones and antibiotics, then guess where that then goes? Into you when you consume, because all toxins are stored in fat. Margarine, there's a one cell difference between that and plastic. It's carcinogenic as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to label it as such. All have been hydrogenated, totally dysfunctional. If you look at the main research, it clearly shows since the First World War that we've had a massive increase in a lot of PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. They are not stable at room temperature, most of them. There has been a massive decrease or decline in saturated fat. And as clearly shown by that study, or those studies, saturated fat is good for you. So, what can you do? You've got the butter. Let me remind you about some other oils and other butters that you could use. Lard, ghee, fantastic. Saturated fat is stable. The poofers are not as stable, like I said, at room temperature. Olive oil is good, but all fats and oils have a smoking point. And if you want to be as anal as me and you want to find out what those temperatures are, go and Google it. The smoking point for oils you can find on Google. If you wanted to improve the smoking point for, say, olive oil, add turmeric to it. Great for reducing inflammation as well. But I do not recommend that you use olive oil at temperature. The oils that are good, avocado oil, great oil. Coconut oil, there was, some, there was a study done, well, loads of studies done, but there was one study that was done that clearly showed those people that just changed their fat and used coconut oil 
lost 36 pounds over 12 months. Now for some of you, you might not be that weight challenged that you were required to lose that amount. But just think about it, just change your fat or your oil and you can lose weight. How cool! I mean it's a mild trained triglyceride anyway, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. As I say, the lyric acid kills parasites. It's fantastic oil, I use it on my skin. Do you like it? I mean, it doesn't even come off or anything, it's beautiful. I know I'm beautiful without it. Thank you. That's a compliment. I'm going to say thank you and let it go. So, please, take control and realise that saturated fat is not the problem. I mean, just imagine, you know, years ago when Paleolithic man was out there hunting and he'd been told by his wife, or by, the, by his wife, you know, when you kill that mammoth, you can, um, you're not allowed to eat the fat, just eat the protein. Hell no, we ate the whole damn thing, we stripped it clean and then we put the jacket on to keep us warm. <laughs> What's changed? Okay, we killed off the mammoth, but you get where I'm coming from, people. Saturated fat has never been the problem unless it contains toxins, and it won't if you choose organic. Lard, butter, ghee, I've gone through them all. They are great. Avocado oil, they all have higher smoking points. If you go beyond the smoking point of any fat or oil, Houston, we have a problem. And the reason that you have is because it's become rancid, fetid and carcinogenic. Let me ask you a question. What happens when you use olive oil, let's say you cook with it, and then you allow it to cool down? Well, at room temperature, olive oil is liquid, is it not? However, once you cook with it, and it goes beyond its smoking point, at room temperature, once it's cooled down, cooled down it will become solid. Rancid, fetid, carcinogenic. Don't do that. So, you can obviously add other spices and all the rest of it to maybe up the, the smoking point. You don't necessarily need to know that. All you need to know is that once you start cooking the crap out of your foods, and we've only been doing that for about 125,000 years, because we are the only species on the planet that do heat our foods, and no other animal does. I'm not saying not to do that. However, just be aware that you will lose the bacteria, the enzymes, and a lot of the nutrients and the vitamins and minerals. They will leave the food or even the product, if you choose to eat products, once you start heating it. So please, you have a better choice to make. I hope this all makes sense. And you can celebrate. And if you're a woman and you have a husband, he's all gonna fall back in love with you when you start buying butter. Margarine is a poison. Please do not do that. You have a smarter choice to make. My love to you all, have a fantastic day and find something funny in what you're gonna do next. <laughs> Bye for now.